Care Collab time! Woohoo! And my goodness, do we have a subject today! Tolumnias! And I can tell you that we have quite a list, or as I like to call them, a gaggle of channels that are participating in this Care Collab. So I want to say thank you very much for joining in to Plants and Other Things, Matt by Nature, What's Up Orchids, Emmy's Orchids, Lynn Smith, Honeybees and Orchids, Ariasha's Orchid Diaries, Michelle's Life on Repeat, Cloud Forest Vibes, Orchids and More, and Art and Orchids. <laughs> All the links of the videos will be in the description below. And I cannot vouch or say what makes these Tolumnia so popular with so many orchid growers, but I'll tell you what makes them popular for me and my collection. When you get into orchid growing and you get that bug, more orchids is all that you can think of. But space can become an issue. These guys are so cute. They're so small. They will fit into a nook and cranny. And at the end of the video, you will see where I have them for my summer setup because this is my winter setup. They will fit and they will grow quietly away in their own little space, not taking up a lot of room. And then you have more orchids. That is what the charm was with Tolumnias when I was building the collection that I'm dealing with right now. I have here 12, I believe. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. Yes, I have 12. I used to have more. I lost two over the winter. A third one is probably on its way out. I have four empty baskets, which one day might need to get filled again, but we'll have to wait and see these Tolumnias, in my opinion, are supposed to be easy growers. If you get it right, any orchid is an easy grower. Get it wrong, and they will go downhill very, very quickly. In my case, I lost the first two or three because I wanted to grow them in semi-hydro. That didn't work. It can work, though, if you get the ratio of the Leca pebbles correct with the base of the orchid. It is a very successful grow method for Tolumnias. It's also the time of year when you're trying to get a Tolumnia to enjoy and settle in to semi-hydro. I failed. I haven't tried again since because I wanted to make sure that my next order of Tolumnias would actually grow successfully. So I put them, as you can see, into the setup of open baskets with just lava rock. And everything was hunky-dory and they settled in nicely and grew on really well. Until last year. I used to fertilize at 300 parts per million. I used to fertilize very early in the morning and I just take the sprayer and I'm not doing that now because it's late afternoon and I don't want them wet. But I used to just spray them 300 parts per million in the morning and get them nice and drenched. Thinking that by the time noon came around, when I went through and just sprayed them with plain RO water, that I was giving them a flush and that there would be no salt accumulation on the lava rock. I was wrong. My rapid decline of Tolumnias and how they were performing was evident last year, 2020, in the summer. And then I did a video about them. And then I listened to the video back as I was editing and I was listening to myself. I am fertilizing at 300 parts per million. And I thought, are you crazy? If somebody had said that on their video and was wondering why their Tolumnias weren't performing, I would have just put in the comment and said respectfully that is far too high a concentration of fertilizer. My mind back in the day was seeing as I'm spraying them in the summer several times a day, who cares? I can go all gung ho and anyway, I'm flushing them out. By the end of the day, there is no more salts or any kind of fertilizer on the baskets in the lava rock. I was very wrong and in my climate here in southern Spain they can dry out within the hour when it comes to June, July and August. So even if I do water them with 300 parts per million early in the morning, by the time noon comes around and I go and water them again with just plain RO water, those roots will have been dried out and they would have had salt on them like there is no tomorrow nothing of the amount that they can absorb in that concentration, leaving a lot of minerals on my lava rock, not allowing any new roots to even develop before they started to burn, and 
rapid, rapid decline and sad little tolumnias by the end of summer of 2020. And this is what I was kind of looking at at the end of summer of 2020. You would think this tolumnia is dehydrated. You see the size of the fan, you'd think it's actually should be okay, but it's not. You see the roots that are there. Well, there's roots, so you water. Those roots are inactive. I have nuked them to a crisp with too much fertilizer, so the tolumnia cannot hydrate herself. Now I'm fighting for this one not to become casualty number three for the winter season of 20 and 21. I'm hoping it's not too late for this one. Let me show you salt buildup, even though I have been flushing these out since probably September of 2020 that I have not been using any fertilizer on them. And I want to get away from having the salt on my lava rock. So I'm going to be removing this piece of lava rock this piece of lava rock because no amount of spraying with a strong jet spray is getting rid of that salt accumulation. I'm trying to protect the mic from the wind, so forgive me if I sometimes get the angle wrong and things are out of focus. This is what salt buildup on lava rock looks like. It is on the outside now of the basket, pretty much inside around the perimeter of the tolumnia itself. Everything is back to normal and there is no salt buildup. Now there's another thing I have to be mindful of and that is to be able to differentiate between salt buildup and lava rock naturally fading because of light. And that is an example right here of fading of lava rock that is not salt. Salt comes across as little speckles like you would see over there. This is fading based on sunlight. So here we are. I am now in April of 2021. I stopped fertilizing them as soon as I recognized what I was doing wrong. And they started to pick up slowly. Nothing is fast in the orchid world, but they started to pick up and recover. Now, coming to the spring of 2021, I'm looking at my tolumnias again. Every day I carry this tray out and then at night I bring it back in. I'll explain why. But when I see them now out here, they were nice and green during the winter, which is a good color to have for tolumnias. Nice green leaves because there isn't as much light in the winter where they live. They are also protected by the hedge in the back when I do bring them out during the winter. So this is always shade. Late afternoon sun is now hitting them on their trays. So you can see how much red I've got in my tolumnias. Every little one is pretty much burgundy. That is stress. That is the anthocyanin saying, yep, I'm getting plenty of light. And in this case, with these tolumnias, I would say stress because I'm getting too much light a tolumnia that's getting plenty of light has freckles and not a complete red leaf. Freckles is good enough for a tolumnia to bloom. It doesn't mean that you always, always need a lot of light because each cross, each hybrid is different, but that is plenty of light. A little bit of freckling here and there. Burgundy, red anthocyanin, not so much. That is far too much light. But I have to keep them on the tray until about now because the night temperatures here in the winter will drop lower than 13, 14 degrees Celsius and mine will not tolerate anything below 13, 14 degrees Celsius. So they cannot live where they normally live and we'll see that at the end of the video. They can't live there all year round. I have to bring them in, hence a big tray, and I put them all on the tray, and then every day when it's sunny, I bring them out, and at night before it gets cold, I bring them back in. However, I mentioned that I have not fertilized them for six months now. So you can also say, hang on a second, 
light, yes. But this color is, can also signify a lack of magnesium. It's not always light. And in my case, I believe now I have a combination of both going. They're getting a lot of light now. And then late afternoon, they've been in the direct sun, as you can see. But because of no fertilizer, that color is also telling me that I need to start with fertilizing. At least start with Epsom salts so that they can get some magnesium back into them. This color could also mean it's been too cold. And then they go this color to protect themselves. It is not always a light thing. And my Tolumnias had two nights where I left them outside. They'll be fine for 13, 12 degrees, one or two nights. I'm saying that not because I made a mistake, but they will be fine. As you can see, they're fine. That could also be those two nights of being a little bit too cool for their liking. So anthocyanin is not always a sign of bright light, high light, especially when it comes to the example of my Tolumnias. No fertilizer, magnesium deficiency, similar kind of a result, similar look. And cold could also be a factor that produces this reddish tinge on the leaves. All three factors, in my case, apply. So what I'm going to do is start to, well, I've already started. I did 100 parts per million of Epsom salts at the crack of dawn one day when we started, and I'm gonna do that once a month now. But then within two hours before it got warm, I've already flushed out that Epsom salt and just replaced it with a spray of fresh RO water. The results will probably not be evident in my collection until winter 21-22, because for the rest of the summer, they are gonna get a lot of bright light, not direct sun, but my white reflective walls, even in the shade, that is a lot of light. So I won't see any results of the Epsom salts taking effect. But what I want to see is no more decline. If I get down to 100 parts per million, which is now the plan, I have an extra sprayer with only 100 parts per million of MSU fertilizer in it, only for the Tolumnias, that will show me that they will probably grow on healthy and I can maintain the health of the roots as well. So I've made some progress from the first year where I think they were so starved when they arrived in my collection that I then, the first full 12 months, I thought, yep, this is working. I can do 300 parts per million. They can handle it. The first year, yeah, maybe. They were starved, they were happy to get something. But then when they were happy and strong, it was like, no. So I'm pretty much doing a reset with my Tolumnias and I hope that this information does help somebody. And I really wish I could grow in self-watering and LECA, but now I'm not even gonna change the setup because I would not have space anymore for 12 Tolumnias in self-watering and LECA. The shelves are full. So what I'm going to do now is just Take my time, well, we'll see you in a second, but I'm gonna put them now into their permanent location for the summer because it is time. This is not something I want to perpetuate. And my nights are now a steady 15 degrees Celsius. And then we'll look at them in their little hanging location by the trellis on the west side of my blooming alley. I will be right back. One more step closer to having all of my orchids where they should be for the coming growing season. And this is now the west side of my blooming alley. And for now, I believe they are distributed sufficiently and well enough so that I can enjoy the blooms that of, of those that are blooming and the spikes of the ones that are going to bloom. And because of the way that these guys bloom, it is not as if the blooms last forever, for a long time individually, but because of how they bloom, the spikes themselves take quite a long time to develop and then it takes forever for the buds to mature and open. I have been waiting for that spike now up there for the last two months, but in the next couple of days that will open. My little red one down here to the left, if I can show it, it's going to be a bit difficult. It's a tight squeeze in my blooming alley. There's a little red one 
that has just started to bloom there to the left. We'll look at that in another video. But with regards to the spikes, the blooms can last, let's say, a month on a spike once the cluster opens. But then it is advisable not to cut the spikes off because it will branch, which is super cool, giving another opportunity to have more blooms, like up here. And I would like to say that is pink brished, I'm pretty confident. But you can see the spent twig spike up there was the first flush. It bloomed with a second flush, and it's going to branch again. I know that this is all a little bit awkward, but I did have to get them out of the sun really fast based on the color that you saw them at. And today it's a bit of a toaster. And I wanted you to see my telomnias on the tray before they go up against the back wall because normally all this is Colmenara Maasai red space. So yeah, do not cut the spikes, let them dry off naturally. There is a tendency for them to branch, not necessarily when the telumnia is still a small orchid. If she's still young and not quite established, the branching won't happen. And you can see that with my little red one down there on the left, it's a first time bloomer. It's a minute little spike, two blooms. Well, that's fine, at least I know which one it is. Whereas the pink brish down here, yes, I have two. <laughs> that one is a much longer spike, much more established. It has two spikes and then it will branch. This is not the Caribbean where they originally come from. This is the west side of my blooming alley where they will live now until mid-November or until the temperatures drop below 13 degrees Celsius. And my morning routine will be to take my sprayer, 100 parts per million, and just douse them, spray them all down. And then within a couple of hours of doing that, after I've had my second cup of tea, I come and I will then just flush them out with plain RO water. And you can see the breezy kind of atmosphere this whole blooming alley has. It is south facing, but east west, and that is normally how we have our winds. It's either poniente or levante. So that's the problem here. And you will see that it late afternoon sun will come through this curtain unless I secure the curtain at the bottom, which at this point in time, I do not want to do. I quite want to have the breeze going straight through because these guys still need a good flush every single day to clean out the lava rock. I apologize for the bad lighting at this point in time. It's the way that the video scheduling went. I am so sorry if it's not super clear. I hope that my words were. It was kind of a weird thing to have them on the tray and then move them into this location while doing the filming. But there is one small thing else I want to mention. The pest issues. Sometimes I get little itty bitty aphids on my telumnia buds. They are easily taken care of. The scale, not so much. And here is a Tulumnia firm mocha dot, which I believe to be possible. I don't know. It's never bloomed for me. And this one has problems with scale. As you can see, these guys are dead. But once scale gets onto these little Tulumnias, they are pretty much history. Very, very difficult to eradicate. I am working towards saving this little fan here on the left. So that is my main goal at this point in time. I've sprayed it with the garlic alcohol, and then I quickly go in and spray the surface of the lava rock so that it doesn't desiccate any of the roots that might be viable. I have no idea if this little one will survive. Scale and telumnias do not make good friends. And that goes for any orchid and scale, but especially with telumnias. These tight leaf joints, yeah. Big, big problem. So I might be losing another one and that would make five empty baskets. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that at least some of the information was useful, if not so much the lighting and the camera position and all that. I do apologize. I try to do the best with what nature throws at me. However, there are 10 other channels that have videos on telumnias. Their links are in the description below. Thank you to all the channels 
that have participated. This video is already far too long. I will not list the names all over again. You know who you are. Your link is in my description. And I encourage anyone who would like to see if somebody else has a better result on their Tolumnias to go and check out those videos. Personally, I think that 2021 for me and my Tolumnias is gonna be much, much better than 2020. Now that I've figured out what I was doing wrong, I haven't seen a fan of that size before, or as lush as that one up there before, or as prominent and healthy looking as the one to the top right. Thank you everybody so very much for watching, for your support, for sticking to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thank you for everybody that participated in the Care Collabs. Have yourselves a beautiful day and please stay safe. Take care. Bye. <music>